Welcome to the Living Word, the teaching ministry of Pastor Fisayo Adeniyi, lead pastor of the Ransomed House Lagos. Get ready for enlightenment, encounter, and impartations by the Word. Be blessed as you listen. Not saying they were like, I've got news for you. I'm a winner. I've got news for you. I'm a winner. Very quickly, let me go to my prepared sermon. Ruth chapter 2. Is there anybody by the name of Ruth here? Ruth chapter 2. I was going to say open that person to chapter 2. Ruth chapter 2. Now there was a wealthy and influential man in Bethlehem named Boaz who was a relative of Naomi's husband, Elimelech. One day Ruth, the Moabite said to Naomi, let me go out into the harvest field to pick up the stalks of grain left behind by anyone who is kind enough to let me do it. Naomi replied, All right, my daughter, go ahead. So Ruth went out to gather grain behind the harvesters. And as it happened, she found herself working in a field that belonged to Boaz, the relative of her father-in-law, Elimelech. While she was there, Boaz arrived from Bethlehem and greeted the harvesters. The Lord be with you, he said. The Lord bless you, the harvesters replied. Then Boaz asked his foreman, Who is that young woman over there? Who does she belong to? And the former replied, she's the young woman from Moab who came back with Naomi. She asked me this morning if she could gather grain behind the harvester. She has been hard at work, hard working, ever since, except for a few minutes rest in the shelter. Boaz went over and said to Ruth, listen, my daughter, <laughs> stay right here with us where you gather grain. Don't go to any other field. Stay right behind the young woman working in my field. See which part of the field they are vesting and then follow them. I have warned the young men not to treat you roughly. Right. And when you are thirsty, help yourself to the water they have drawn from the wall. Verse, verse 10. Ruth fell at his feet and thanked him one way. What have I done to deserve such kindness? He asked. I am only a foreigner. Yes, I know. But I also know about everything you have done for your mother-in-law since the death of your husband. I have heard how you left your father and mother and your own land to live here among complete strangers. Let's go to verse 19 for reason of time. Where did you gather all this grain today? Naomi asked. Where did you walk? May the Lord bless the one who helped you. So Ruth told her mother-in-law about the man in whose fish she had walked. She said, the man I walk with today, his name Boaz. May the Lord bless him, Naomi told her daughter-in-law. He's showing his kindness to us as well as to your dead husband. That man is one of our closest relatives. One of our family redeemers. Then Ruth said, What's more, Boaz even told me to come back and stay with his harvesters until the entire harvest is completed. Good, Naomi exclaimed. Do as he has said, my daughter. Stay with his young woman right through the whole harvest. You might be harassed in other fields, but you'll be saved with him. So Ruth walked alongside the woman in Boaz's feet and gathered grain with them. Until the end of the barley harvest. Then she continued walking with them through the wheat harvest in early summer. And all the while she lived with her mother. I will be speaking this morning on how to position yourself for a husband. How to position yourself for a husband. Last week we started by speaking on how to find a wife. Glory to God. That fast? Because the Lord of your fathers were with you. Glory to God. Father, thank you for your word. Because the entrance of the word will give light and understanding unto the simple. As simple folks, we've come to learn at your feet. I made my thunder pen of a ready writer. Lord, help me distill your word appropriately. Let me not do injustice to your word. Father, let your word come forth with a very purpose for sending it. Father, let your word, let your people run with it. Thank you, Father. Because my tongue is the pen of a ready writer. And it writes the word of life upon the spirit of your people. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. You can have your seat in God's presence. Look at your neighbor and say, how to position yourself. It should ring differently if you have a lady as your neighbor. How to position yourself for a husband. Note, I am not speaking on how to position yourself for a partner. I'm not speaking on how to position yourself for a boyfriend. I'm speaking on how to position yourself for a husband. 
Let me start because I have a lot of things to say. In the passage we read, certain things stood out. Five things very quickly that stood out. The passage we read. Number one, Boaz had information about Ruth. That is Ruth chapter 2, 11 to 12. Listen to this. Ruth just came back. Came to the place for the first time. And they were already giving the summary of her life. Nobody questioned her. But they were giving Boaz all the information. Listen. Don't ever think no one knows about you. Dear lady, there is no dark runs. There is no eating runs. The information is known. So Boaz had information. Number two, Boaz asked around about Ruth. And now you find the Ruth chapter 2 verse 5. Listen, unmarried men are always seeking for information. Before they make that decision, they will ask around. Who be that girl? Do you know about her? If they are attracted to you and they like you, then they will do due diligence. They are going to ask. Just like buying a property. You don't just pay. You want to see whether it is genuine. Dear lady, I hope you are listening. Number three, Boaz wanted roots close to him. If a man likes you, he will be, he wants to be close to you. Ruth chapter 2 verse 8 to 9. Position is key. If he likes you, he will always want you close. And he wouldn't want to risk losing you. Who has knew that going, allowing her to go to another person's field is taking a risk? Why? Because Boaz is an old man. All of these young FEC boys can just pick the young lady and he is not ready for that kind of competition. So he said you will be saved here is a lie. The guy was not watching over Ruth alone. He was also watching for himself. If he likes you, he wants you close. Number four, that tells you that I don't want to be walking. They let people be seen us on the street. You can see now that's not love. Glory to God, number four. Boaz wanted her close so that he can take care of her and protect her. Ruth chapter 2 verse 8, 14 to 15. True love will provide, will protect, and will care for you. True love will provide, will protect, and will care for you. Number five, Naomi advised Ruth to stay in position. Look at your name and say, stay in position. <laughs> Naomi was an experienced woman. She understand this game. She said, just stay very close to this guy. There is a positioning necessary if you want to find true love. All this jumping from one guy to another. As you are talking to that guy, you are mentioning seven, or seven other guys. And you are saying they are your best friends. He is going to think about it and say, Ah, I'm not, I'm not severe. So you've got to maintain position. Sons of God, let me say this to you. Sons of God, don't shoot at random ladies. It takes time for conviction. And persuasion to grow. What are we doing? What are we doing? After one month, we are not doing anything. I'm doing due diligence. Don't rush me to this. After one month, no, we are not doing anything. If that's what you're asking. We are not doing anything. Why? Because I'm just getting to know you. It takes time for conviction and persuasion to grow. But if I just want to be your boyfriend, it doesn't take time. Your shape is fine. You are beautiful. Let us go. But for lifelong partnership, it takes time. Dear lady, I hope you are listening. It takes time for conviction to grow. Now let's go to the meat. That's just the uh, appetizer. Let's go to the meat. Last week we spoke about the man. Who is the one doing the finding? Is that not so? Today I want to speak to those who are the ones who are found according to the Bible and according to our culture. That means that you can't go and shoot your shot. If you have brothers who tell you truth, they will tell you that when you shoot your shot, the guy does not value you. They say men don't like what they cannot fight for. Men like to deserve it. That's why ladies understand grace more than men. Because they want to earn it. You are their trophy, their prize. It was the reason 
in, 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 at the citadel, when the king had brought out everything she had, that's why the king said, let the queen also come out. And let her come so that the beauty can be seen. But listen, as the rule said, let the queen come out. First she said, I'm not coming anywhere. Ah, my prized possession that I want to show the world. You know, that's how you use your girlfriend as wallpaper. She, he wanted to bring the wallpaper out. Let them see. Baby, there's no one like you. He said, I'm not going, you are drunk. Daily she said that. Something eat him in his ego. And he said, no, it cannot work. Listen. Consider the story of Ruth that we read. Ruth didn't go out seeking for Boaz, as some people would want us to believe. She simply went to work. And it was her work that positioned her for relational bliss. So, let me start this sermon by first of all saying, don't set, this is not a sermon that will help you to go and find a man. Let's knock it out. Don't set out to find or get a man. There's nothing like that. You shall be found in the place of work and in the performance of God's ordained assignment for your life. That's where you'll be found. In the place of purpose. As you, as that's why you will hear people say, why are members easily get married? Because it is in the place of the assignment. Hallelujah for the Lord. That man saying glory. <laughs> Hallelujah. You are the reason I live. You are the one for me. As he said that, the guy is also saying, you are the one for me. Why? Because she is in the place of her performance. In our ordained place. Ushers. Don't you know that girl? The one that stands and always smiles, they know her. You don't have to be describing the one that used to sit at that angle, the one that is, you don't have to describe so much because she's in the place of her assignment. Ruth was found in the place of her work. You don't go find him. This is a sermon on biblical standard, which is sufficient. So the summary of what I'm saying today is, how can I be properly positioned? In my heart, in my mind, in my outlook. I mean, if someone in this church is looking, how can they not pass me by? Hear my own cry. When on others, you know, others are getting married. Thou art holy. Do not pass me by. Three things that wisdom teaches in relationship. Number one, God has a plan for your marital life. God has a plan for your marital life. My only advice for you is that you don't miss it. Ruth seemed to be in a chaos, but God planned to ask Sean true. Who would have thought that going to work on grains will lead her to her partner? God has a plan for your life. Sometimes it may not look like what it looks like now. You will find that man in odd places. See, the way we dress up for parties. People have that belief that when you, you, you if I, your mother tell you, you're not going to marriage, where will you get married? You have been going out for three years consecutively, every month. Nobody has said anything. Many have missed their guy because they were not expecting him to be where they thought he would be. Consider the story of Rebecca. He went to do what? To fetch water. It was while fetching water. That the man that has been sent to go and find a husband, a wife for Isaac, found her. Hey, who are you? It could have been anybody fetching water. If, you had, if she had refused to fetch water that day, if it was Leah that went to fetch water, no, that was not, that's, that's another story. If it was a real lady that went to fetch that water, the other lady. You can see why you have know that what this is about is not just about the cosmetics. It's not just about the aesthetics. It's more about the principles that undergird your life. Listen to this and I want to tell you, you will never get to heaven and accuse God of bias. And that's why you did not get married. Number two, don't let anybody lie to you. 
that there are lady, a lady will, every lady will get married. That was those days. You follow what I'm saying? I have seen in these days, 46, 47, 51, 52, not married. Not because they don't want to, but because men are passing. And appropriately, it was because they were not positioned. Some of us are so proud that it will take the devil to marry us. The devil is proud. I will tell you how to get there. Number two, wisdom that teaches relationship. All ladies are girls, but not all girls are ladies. This is the imperative of growth. Marriage is for ladies and women, not for girls. When I was telling the guys, you boys shouted. <laughs> you were born a girl. Being a lady is a function of growth. The more you grow, the more internally attractive you become. Some ladies grow in stature. But in knowledge, perspective, and understanding, they remain girls. A relationship is not for girls. I ask you, dear lady, when was the last time you read a book? And not because you want to pass. The relative of growth. Number three, wisdom teaches that you don't pre-qualify a man. That word pre-qualify is the word used in sales. It's a, sale, it's a word used by marketers and sales guys. When they look at somebody, they can tell whether that person will be able to buy what they want to sell or not. So if I want to sell a land of 2 million naira or 10 million naira, and I see you, I can pre-qualify and, and, and just profile you that you can't, let me not waste my time. You can't afford this, so I'll go away. Many times, many times, many good sales guys will tell you that when you pre-qualify, you lose out. Because some people don't look like their account. I mean, if you, I love Igbo. If you, if you pre-qualify Igbo man, you will not sell anything. The guy is wearing short knicker. He won't even wear Crocs. He's just wearing a slide. And that slide has seen better days. And then you think he cannot afford 1,000. So why would I waste my time with 2 million? And in that guy's account, is a billionaire breathing. Breathing. He will use a Camry pencil. That's what he's driving. That the thing he will push it, push the battery, and you are thinking you are richer than him. But you know you are just pre-qualifying the guy. Many ladies are not married because they pre-qualify men. Now you look at the guy and think it's not it's not going to amount to anything. Listen to pre-qualify means to judge prematurely. As a lady, I want to want, I want to advise. Think about the last guy that asked you out. How do you make that person feel? Did they walk away from that situation with their dignity intact? Or did you make decision awkward on them? Did they walk away kind of embarrassed? Did they walk away saying, wow, I will never ask a lady out again? Or do they walk away thinking the whole world is full of classy women? As a lady, I'm not saying say yes to every man. Make it a goal that everyone will walk away from you feeling, wow, the world is full of great and classy ladies. Because you don't like him, doesn't mean you should treat him like a leper. Let us progress here. There are things, a lady that helps you findable. There are fine ladies with that. I love your people. Your holiness. I love your pursuit of God. I love your dexterity in adly scriptures. I love your pitch when you sing. I love your passion for God's people and God's house. But don't be mistaken. All of these things make you a godly woman. A good minister. And perhaps a good Christian. But not necessarily a good wife material. Hallelujah. I'll I'll say you are very anointed. In fact, we ordain you in this church before I ordain some guys. But it does not mean that you are a good wife material. I am married. 
Jesus later leave you alone. It is very difficult for you to have a means of these things except you follow the things I'm about to say. How do you position yourself, therefore, to have a, find a husband? Number one, align your expectation to God's standard. Align your expectation to God's standard. Sometimes the problem is not that the man is not here. The problem is that you are, what you are looking for is different. That's why you have zoned your husband as a friend. Many Christian ladies want a man that knows where he's going. But God's men don't usually have a clue. Think about that for a moment. Drink through the Bible. All the great men that had relationship with God and we are used and blessed. They usually don't have a clue about where they are going. And even when they had a clue, their present life does not reflect where they are going. Just think about that. All the way from Abraham. Think about it. Imagine Abraham came to this church. And Abraham calling sister Sarah. Sarah, you know I love you. You know we've been good. We pray together. And I, I can't do without you. But God is sending me to a place. And Sarah said, yeah, see, I don't know. Will you marry me? But we are living in Lagos. We are living in Lagos. To where? I do not know. But will you marry me? Will you marry me? I am anointed of God. He poured a whole jar. Samuel, a whole jar of oil on my head. You know the national prophet. Poured a whole oil on my head. Will you marry me? I don't have a house. I'm running around in the bush. But the king, Buari, whether it's in Obuna, wants to kill me. Will you marry me? How about Joseph? Imagine Joseph come clean boy, fine boy. Joseph just walk. And every lady have been looking at Joseph. But for, for Potiphar's wife, for Foley, it was that that guy was also. Joseph came in. Yeah, that guy. That guy. Joseph come and kneel down. I said, you know, we've been in a relationship for a while. I think it is time for pastors to join us. I said, what do you do? I wash plates in Potiphar's house. Let that sink in. Let us sink in. I watched me in Potiphar's house. But I have great dreams. I have great dreams. I, have, I, saw, I saw the moon. I saw the moon. And the stars, they bow down to me. I saw the moon. I saw the moon. Is it moon are we? Is it moon are we eating? We are washing plates. Let us be dating. The nice ones will say, let us be dating. And when it looks like it, we can get married. Listen, dear friends. God's men don't always have a direction or have all the way. When I asked my sister out, <laughs> I was completely good. I was a big boy on all levels. I was driving a Benz. I had to plot of land. If you believe that, you can believe that Pope gave back to me. Right. I had nothing. Zero thing. The thing I had was a good perfume and I wore it well. When I went to their house, for four days, the week self, the mother was asking me, who came to Greek? But why? My family was too cruelly wow. It was this man. I, I took my father's car there so that they can believe that I was on. Did I, even, I came on leg. I came on leg. They came to pick me from the road. He was asking me, what is the plan? I said, I cannot tell you until I see you. I can't tell you. I say, what are you living for? I say, I can't tell you until I see you. Yeah, you see, this is a blueprint. I'll come with my book. Yeah. When I go to the house, we were talking on the chair. I said, I brought this tool out. Open the book. And I began to share the message. There was nothing. Nothing. In the, which account? I don't even account. And I, I was telling her. I said, you know, I'm in Rema. I will leave Rema. We are going to this place. God has called me. We're starting this one. After this one, we'll start this one. I, I, that's the vision. Vision. Nothing but vision. Nothing. That's all. All these ones are even better than the way I look that time. Oh, I was going to project some of our pictures. You see how I look? Very awesome. I was telling myself, ah, 
And people were saying I was fine. Oh, glory to God. I'm trying to say to you that I did not, I did not have any material thing that looked like where I was going. I should not tell you about that. I tell you about that. It was my house. I, I told her they should now be paying me. I didn't look like it. So the reason why you are not is because you don't understand that vision is better than money. A man with a vision is better than a man with a job. Because a man with a job can be sacked. A man with a vision, no one can take it from him. You make a decision because he's working in one of the big fives. Or is it big four? And then they sack him from the big. He now has to go to the small. Then your marriage starts having problems. And you will need profit. If I married him, it was not like this. He used to be very prosperous. He was working a job. And they said they don't need him. But two. So what am I saying? Look for a man who is in motion. If he's on the move, follow that train. Don't go and park behind a parked trailer because I said it now. I don't look like it. Some people will never make it in 100 years. They will never make it. I'm telling you. They are parked. They are not going anywhere. NFA, no future ambition. Don't do it. Number two, <laughs> do all you can to practice hearing from God. That's how to position yourself. You must practice hearing from God. It's amazing how many ladies want to hear God as it concerns marriage for the first time. Oh, is there? What God is saying. But he has asked me out. I say, hey, so what is God saying? There, I've been praying. God has not been saying anything. Sometimes I tell them, stop praying. I don't say anything. You know why? Because I've asked them, has he, has he ever spoken to you before? And the answer was no. Don't make a decision. Go and consult your pastor. Let him help you. Because right now, help yourself. So from now, begin to practice hearing God's voice. Listen. And I've had a lot of people say no to proposals. They know to proposals because of peace. They are using what we call pisometer. I call it pisometer. Listen. And listen to me very closely. Pisometer is not how you know whether you should say yes or no to a job or a man. Can you hear what I'm saying? I lost my peace. I didn't have peace. There's no place in scriptures. Glory to God. You see, there is no place in scriptures where you are supposed to be led by peace. The peace of the Lord, he should guide your heart. The peace of the Lord should keep your heart. For you are to be led of the Spirit. Romans chapter 8 verse 14, as many as are sons, as many as are children of God, they are led by the Spirit of God. You are led of the Spirit. Philippians chapter 4 verse 6 to 7, then begins to talk about chapter 4, 6 to 7, then says that let your prayers, requests, supplication, and thanksgiving make a request known unto God, and the peace of God that passes human understanding will guard your heart. Isaiah 26 verse 3. Bible says peace will guide your heart. The peace of the Lord guides your heart. It doesn't guide your decision. It's what keeps you sane. It is not what tells you yes or no. So peace is good. It gives you a clue about a matter. Because you see, sometimes I didn't have a, I didn't have peace. It was your fear of marriage that didn't let you have peace. Because your, your parents don't have good marriage. So now that you are about to make a decision about marriage, you are afraid. And you are not saying, I lost my peace. It's a lie. It's not, it doesn't have to do with the guy. It has everything to do with you because your heart is not at rest as it concerns marriage. Many people, I don't have peace. Oh. I told him, no, I don't have peace. Oh. Is that why you are supposed to be learned? You learn to hear God. I know many people have said no to a God or their relationship. People have also said yes. The devil induced relationship. I will soon preach on hearing from God. Number three, be the kind of person you want to attract. That's positioning. Be the kind of person you want to attract. Let me say this to you. When you step up, the kind of guys that come to you also step up. <laughs> Have you discovered that when you are a secondary school graduate, 
Blessing God, they don't come and ask you. It's real. FG cannot come and meet me now and say, I saw a girl. I say, what does she say? She sells something at Ajay on that bridge. I say something is wrong with you. Magba ya will talk because that one is supposed to be for street people. The same way it applies. Whenever you step up, the people who ask you out step up. You know, many of you want truthful people because you say to yourself you are truthful or you are a liar. You are not real. Even you speak with a fake accent. You lie about your family and upbringing. So people have lied to themselves so much we can't even tell the truth anymore. I'm an Ikoi babe. That's why you never let anybody go to your house. Nobody knows where you stay. Because you are a Langbas again. Listen, be the kind of person you want to attract. You are financially irresponsible. You are an impulsive spender. You spend an insane percentage of your income on hair, shoes, and phone. Make up on your package. Or you want a man who can keep money. They will not laugh here. You've not grown your faith or prayer life. Or you want a demon chasing, tongue speaking, Bible splitting warrior. Because he's the leader of the home. So you are the loser of the home. You want to see him as he is. Right? I don't want fake guys. I don't like fake guys. I just want you to be real with me. Thank you. Look at you. Even your pictures are perfectly fitted from TikTok and Instagram. Air extensions. Push up brass. Makeup and layers of stops. We cannot even know who the real you is. Come and dress. We say come and dress. Come and dress. That's what we tell you. Come and dress. Let's go out. Who are you addressing? It's not possible. You know when you What takes you that long? Because of the layers upon layers upon layers. You want truthful? Be truthful once. Appear to that guy with your pimples. Let him make it. Because he's going to live with that. All this pushing everything up. Back, front, push up. Don't go to the gym. Leave the push. Let him take his decision that way. If he does not like it that way, let him move away. Anything that is built on falsehood will not last. And who told you that? See, people lie to people. Because we live in an age of social media, we are redefining love. I know guys who cannot deal with anybody who is even as, as big as my wife. They can't. It's too big. Too big. I was talking to one young man. That's the part. I mean, I can't do slim. Except it's God's will. But when I married her, it was God's will. Slim me. Slim. Finish. Now listen. <laughs> now listen. <laughs> the Lord is good. The product she is now is all of us. Yeah, so. Now listen. Some people want slim. And I've seen people who say, what will I be okay? What will I be holding? Yoruba people says, you like that one, I don't like that one. That's why we don't contribute money together in cooperative. Go and marry. You will be fight. Who will we'll choose? If we we'll contribute money and go to Blanco to go and pick wife, you will say, this is the shape. I say, no. No. No, no, this is not my dream. So we'll start fighting each other. Stay where you are. Your kind is coming. You are the speck for some people. All this lie, you are lying to yourself. Hey, I need to. Don't ski yourself in the gym. Because people now, they are building things that are not necessary. Now listen to this scripture. The Bible says, you are lazy. You know, you, are, you know some people are very lazy. I know a lady that sleeps for 18 hours. I'm not joking. She sleeps. As she will tell you, it's fun. When she wakes up, she goes again. It's normal. Wow. Now listen, people sleep that well and they are telling me they want hardworking guys. Now I want to break it for you from scripture that you are going to get who you are. And it's in the Bible. Genesis chapter 2, verse 18. The Bible says, God said it is not good for man to be alone. I will make him a helper comparable to him. 
That's why when you're a smoker, you get a smoker. Or somebody at least who don't mind smokers. Everyone we get an helper. That's what comparable means. Similar in quality. As good as and equal to. Equal to. You know mass now? Equal to. Two plus four is equal to. So, you will eventually get somebody equal to. See why you have to position yourself to be better. Because if you are better, then you get somebody more. Christian brothers are looking for certain character traits. They won't tell you, but I will tell you today. They are looking for dependability. They are looking for work ethics. They are looking for hard work. They are looking for time management. They are looking for follow through. They are looking for passion and commitment. Loyalty. Listen, if you are more loyal to me than to your husband, there's a problem. One of the first things when the Lord anoints you as the head of this church, you'll be telling me what to do. One of the first things we learn about truth was our work ethic. She just, she could have been sleeping at home and be believing God. She told her mother-in-law, say, let me go to the field. That's our work ethic. Well as established, work hard, have your own money. Don't be waiting for him. Because even now, Ilule, I don't know how to say it in English that will have the same effect. But it is hard, it's hard. One person working is not enough. If you want to really stay in the lake, not in the other lake. I remember I called one of my pastors. I said, Sir, where are you staying? I said, I stay at um, Aja. He said, ah, that's not the island now. I said, ah! No, you people as a way of embarrassing you. How can you say that's not the island? You don't know how much I'm paying. <laughs> Number four, don't objectify yourself. Listen, you objectify yourself even before anyone else does. Ladies, when you start saying, look at me. Ooh, look at my shape. One more. Men only want me for my shape. Every picture you snap is like this. Every picture is like this. Why is it that you cannot dance with your front again? It is. Why? You are now saying guys don't want anything from you more than you. It is you that you have been advertising. If you really want to dance and they will take you, you dance like this. You go down. But when you dance, this is what they saw. This is what they are coming for. That's what they are coming for. You are not a sex object. Stop saying, see my banking body. What nonsense is that? You are Zion's lady. God's treasure house. A support in Israel. You are wise and industrious. The shapes may go, but the true you can never disappear. Number five. Don't be moved by his gold. Seek to dig your own gold. Remember the Proverbs 31 woman. She was industrious. She was hardworking. She was a millionaire by her own right. Make your own wealth. So that her mother will not be saying she'll marry her because of her wealth. I've discovered rich boys now who are married are afraid of marriage because they think you are getting close to them because of their money. But if you have money, they will not say that. When you say, let us meet. It comes in his Camry 2020 spider. You also came with your Jeep. The Bible will follow you there. You will get home. I'm saying, God, maybe I help me to marry that. He will never think it's your money. It's his money. Somebody say, when you have money, don't. God has blessed you. I'm not that kind of pastor. If God has blessed you. You see it. Buy a car. Stop working. I say, I will not get married because they say that when you are married, you have a car and they will not, guys will not want to marry you. It's okay. Some guys who have that kind of mentality will not come to you. Glory to God. Number six, love is family. You are in a relationship with somebody, you need to love their family. Before you even get there, have that position in your head now. Love is family. His mother is not your competitor. She's your mother. Everything you see on Instagram is not so. Everybody in the U.S. are not gay and lesbians. It's Netflix that make it look like that. Every relationship don't have couples, um, mother-in-laws that are witches. Stop watching those kind of Nigerian Yoruba films. Are you following what I'm saying? Number seven, be humble. 
Pride comes before the fall. The way you are going, pride will kill you. You have seen people who are not even as beautiful as you, they are married. So, and you are still thinking it is beauty. It's not beauty, oh. It's inside. It's inside. Be humble. They greet you, you can't even answer. Am I the one that will greet him first? And why do you know that? He, why are you giving cancer such things? It shows there's a problem somewhere. Ladies, you still love me. You guys still love me. Somebody died like that, I'm not sure. <laughs> Number eight. Learn to take care of yourself. I asked you, do you love me before this one? Because I know this one is hard. Learn to take care of yourself. I am tired of ladies coming to enter the car door and I have to wind down. Because the art in, the eat in Lagos is bad. It's bad. It's not easy. From Danfo to Danfo, it's not easy. The Lagos eat is sent by God. It's ordained. So you will sweat. You will sweat. There is no reason to not shave your armpit. It will smell. It will smell. You wear armless. And then you do it. You are not even afraid. You are raising up holy hands in church. That guy was looking at you closely. He wanted to marry you. Marry you. But when he saw that, he said, Jesus. Not me, oh God. Not me, oh God. Take care of yourself. Listen, when you cannot take care of yourself, that's why guys are helping you. That's why they are not coming. They don't want to bother you to take care of a home because you cannot even take care of yourself. Look at that hair. That's when you are making natural hair. Team. Natural, the whole thing is tangled. Look at that hair. Don't die the nonsense. You know, this one, you're kind of, it's, it's confusing people. This is a very key, very important. Very important. I come and greet you at home. Your house is scattered. Your house is scattered. Omega, Omega, miracle worker. See the whole room. It's like you just did miracle there. Look, you know, you see, these are things. Get prepared. Hey, my mom, my mom used them. Mom, it's not your mommy. You are preparing. See, some of these guys are very rascally. Open tight, they put it somewhere. It is you they will confuse eventually. When they start looking for it, where is my post? I put it there. You run it. It's in the car. It's in the car. You'll be confusing. But if you know the house is set, it's not like you offer so how to shift the pillow to find things. But if you want to have an understanding of how a guy looks like, come to my table. And see. You can't turn it away because some of the papers, I very tiny something. Rubbish, where I am, I understand it in my head. That's how a guy understands his own. It doesn't mean he's not dirty. That's how he understands. How much are they selling the other? If he finishes, borrow money now. I know you are not relaxing your hair. Please, your clothes. Ah, I understand. That's how to position yourself. When I see you coming, you're already looking like a lady. I say, ah, wow, what's going on here? That's why I tell some ladies, dress well. <laughs> they go and do evangelism. I'll dress them well. I'll come and be meeting me. I don't dress well. <laughs> dress well. Pay more attention to the inside than the outside. That's number nine. Dear lady, life is not about shapes, looks, allure, and gorgeousness. I'm gorgeous. I'm gorgeous. Not those things you and your friends say on TikTok. Serious business people don't, are not even on TikTok. Because he's trying to find money. So you see? So you see? You will need more than glamour to make a man say he wants to marry you. He can, you see, I, I, I'm trying to make a difference between a relationship of sex. And a relationship that leads to marriage. Two are very different. When a man wants to settle, you hear them, I want to settle down. They are not saying they are looking for a wife. And I'm thinking, but you have like three girlfriends. Why are you looking for a wife? They know that those ones, they are not part of it. They are not part of it. Fix your character. 
Don't make a man leave your presence and think, ah, you need grace to deal with this one. You know, you know, there have you met people like that? Ah, you will need grace. Let him say, you will need grace to have her. Do you see the difference? So good. <laughs> I, I, I don't deserve this one. No. I will need grace to have her. Not you will need grace to deal with her. I know people that, I mean, in church, born again, tongue speaking. Before you I say, go and meet them, you will be praying in tongues before you go. Because you know, they are fire. Fire on the mountain, and nobody seems to be on the road. These ones, if you greet them, they might not even answer you. They are always, have you met people who are always angry? Always angry. They will not say they are 30. Do you want me to marry an angry bird? No. Next one. You need to seek to have a good testimony and a good name with men. The road of I don't care will lead to the house of a dying known. Let me say this to you. There is a great difference between a man and a woman. Men and women. When a man likes a lady and is thinking of marriage, he would ask his friend, what do you know about Lucha? What do you know about her? And then they will give you information. But when a lady likes a man, he won't tell anybody. He will just be blushing by herself on the bed. Because if you see people tell her friend, those ones may also be interested. So they won't say anything. Just keep quiet. That is, am I lying? They just be blushing, thinking about, and be blushing. But guys, they will start talking. Now, the gist is that they will not talk like, I'm thinking I want to marry her. If they say that, the guys will pretend. But guys, don't talk that way. Let me think about that girl. Ah! Ibo. Stop it, Baba! When were in the lorry? Hey, fire! I know this one was sleeping with her. This was sleeping. They will just, in one minute, that positioning that you already positioned, you just leave that position. You know why? Because they have just given you download. Guys talk. That's what I'm trying to say. Don't think they talk about football alone. They talk. Oh, look for four that is like, man, it's not saying anything. I'm telling you, see, they just, it is, I, I, it is admitted that ladies are the ones who talk. Because you people talk very loud. And people like people to see you. But there is nobody that does so cool, cool, That does solo marketing. That, that does, what, what is the English for those words? Gossiping. Like men. They, you see, they gossip for a living. I'm telling you, when you see guys together in a room, they are not talking Bible. They are, they are gossiping about people, about girls. That's what they do. I will give them, I'm giving you clues so that you understand. All this one that you say, nobody, I am very coded in Lekki. They lie, they have seen you. And because one person has seen you, one Lagos boy has seen you, all of the Lagos boys have seen you. I'm tell, even chatting, what's up? Guy, you know who I just see now? You know who believe I'm? I'm telling you. <laughs> Then, <laughs> they won't wait. <laughs> they will not say, you see, people will wait. Say, ah, babe, I get this for you tonight. They know they wait for that kind of thing. Guess what I see now? You know, a believer. Now, Lulu, Lulu, you see where you carry. Hey! I'm telling you, they will say it straight. Therefore, when you see guys, be careful. The reason many ladies are not married. Uh -huh. Be very why, and that's why you must live well. Because if you live well, they will have nothing to say. And that's the good thing. If a guy also sees a good girl, they won't stop talking. That guy I never see him with one boy before. I never see him. I never they will talk and straight. Guys will be telling you that a girl is a virgin and they have not proven it. I'm telling you. Virgin me! Ah! Uh, nobody touch him. Nobody touch him. Personally, I don't know. Tete. Nobody touch him. Touch with him. They will ask how you know. If I will tell us how you know. Allah, know this thing. Forget him. I know this thing. This one, nobody touch him. They never hit him before. But the one where they don't hit too. I say good. They talk him. We passion. I say they support man you. Listen. <laughs> Number 12. Be ready to be led. That's the position. Be ready to be led. Some ladies cannot find guys. You know why? In the church where they are, 
guys are afraid of them because they are very cantankerous. They argue, even with sense, they argue. They just like to have their way. So, guy is thinking, this one will not submit. He's thinking, this one will not submit. So, be ready. Submission is not against feminism. It's for female rights. Enjoy being a lady. I like, my wife will say, if it is possible, you don't want to work. You see, some of you like work. You say, I don't want to work. Let them all stamp on me. <laughs> Get me a chef. <laughs> Get me everything. You see, you will now open the door. They say, there is no open door. Hey, my wife will say, come and open I'm a lady. Be comfortable in your own skin. Don't try and be a guy. Some people want to marry a boyfriend but not a husband. They want only a partner but not a leader. They want an emotional prenup. They want 50-50 in a relationship. They say they will concede authority to God. Only God himself. But they forget that it was God that said there must be a leader in the home. That's why he put the man. He's not better than you. It's just that somebody has to be in Now with leadership comes accountability. That's the story for the guys. Finally, don't listen to fairy tale picture of marriage. You see, when you go on Instagram, people will snap picture of their home. And so you people are shocked when you hear that they are divorcing after one, two months after that picture. I know a lady. He said, relationship is good. Why are you crying here? <laughs> that man is the devil. So what do you mean? See, every time we are fighting, that's when he goes and posts our pictures. See, there are levels to this madness. I'm telling you, levels. Is that he will not even be fighting me that I've made you public. You will not even comment or share. Or share. He said, when things are fine, we are silent on social media. But when the fire comes, that's when you go and post our picture. I remember a couple I used to know. They wore the same clothes. I just got married. And the woman comes in her condo canceling. People have been married for 15 years. And I know people in our church, they who are praying, say, God, give me this kind of marriage. When they come to church, it's anko. You know what they call anko? There's no English for anko. They sit. They wear the same ankara, twinning together. And they sit down beside each other, looking very crisp and wholesome. The woman said, yeah, my husband, we have not spoken to in six months. I wanted to go on that DJ. I said, that's not possible. Last week, you people wore the same clothes. He said, that's very simple, sir. You don't know. He said, I don't know. He said, anybody that dress first and pick a cloth, the second person will just go and pick the same thing. And that's it. I thought you think I should be it while you know people are in love with each other. Let me say this to you. Marriage is work. Marriage is sacrifice. Marriage is commitment. Marriage is loyalty. There's a guy here that is there. I will be, I sleep. I walk out, I sleep 4 o'clock. I sleep 4 a.m. I told him. Then when you get married, all those nonsense, selfishness. You know why? Because it is absolutely impossible to put timetable on sex. It's impossible to put timetable on emotional well-being. She wants comfort. You say you want to be right. You now woke up the next morning. I said, baby, do that you. That's the problem. You need to understand that marriage is love. Finally, it is gentlemen. Qualities you should look for in a man. This one is very important. Qualities you should look for. But not all that is a man is a man. Goatee is not a semblance of man. Because they are wearing dress does not mean they are ready. I talk about that. No, no, no. I talked about the kind of lady you should look for. No, I understand. Mobile, I'm with you. We are together on this matter. Qualities you should look for in a man. Are you following me? Yeah. Number one, look for independence. Don't marry a mommy's boy. You can notice when they are on a call, 
Or when you want to make a decision, you say, yeah, I'll talk to my mommy. I don't know what mommy will say. I love the way my mommy cooks soup. You can already see all of this conversation. You should know you are marrying two persons. Himself and his mother. Mark 10, 6 to 7. From the beginning of the great job, God made them male and female. For this cause shall a man, not a woman, I told you last week, right? It is the man that does the living. It is not the woman, according to scriptures. Shall a man leave his father and mother and cleave to his wife? Look for independence. They still love their parents. I love my parents. I love them. But I've shown them people. <laughs> I mean, I've shown them people. I remember one day they came to our house in the lab. Very, very awesome story. Looking at me, don't tell them. Listen, <laughs> somebody like me is big mouth. <laughs> Not him, right? <laughs> we say, truth is truth. We have to say. They came to the house and I told them, I said, please, they are coming. Come in. They are just married. And then they came with my uncle. Ah, in my house. <laughs> I just called him. I said, he's not staying here. He's not staying. There's one room we have. People have several families in the Lord. Let them go and stay. Hey! If you have, if you have watched their movie, and you see how loving they are, just see their woman, and the drama that comes with the package. That's my mom. Very awesome woman. You see her one. <laughs> she just started the drama. I was very calm. I was already reading the Bible. He said she's not staying in my house. She's going. I said, ah, it's not a problem, no? <laughs> it's not. I denied that you gave back to me. We are father. We are in this together. Before I know it, she had left the house. Uh-huh. <laughs> I was running around with my shame. What would they say about me? Very calm. My dad came and said, go and beg your mother. I said, where is she? Don't you know she has left? Ah. Uh-huh. <laughs> Okay, oh. I followed. I said, I'm sorry, Olga. Oh, yeah, let's go back inside. But the man has left. The man has left. You have to see, there are things who are making a decision. They don't know how to stop because they love you. That's where the man comes from. Ah, it's been one year you are married. Why don't you have a foot of the room? I said, Ah. But nothing is done wrong with us. But they can't submit the name of my wife. Because I couldn't tell them that he was an offer. He was the one who blocked it. Because I was ready to marry. We were not ready to be I mean, I'm not Yoruba in my team. I'm Zion in my team. Some of you want to marry and that night get pregnant. Your life. I don't want that Allah. I'm still getting to know the wife I married. She's now pregnant again. For meeting, I don't want that kind of So you see. Those are things that makes it different. Independent. Do you get that? Do you get what I said? Independent. Number two, marry someone who is affectionate. Marry someone who affectionately cares about you. Affection is very important. Let the husband render to his wife the affection due her. It's not emotional. It's, not, it's a lie. Everybody is emotional. Have you seen him watch us now? Have you seen him watch us now? No. He has to care about you. Yeah, I, I don't miss you. If he does not miss you, you, you are not ready. Yeah, you know, when I was, I don't know, I don't miss anybody. I've changed that nonsense. So if you are saying that now, Mark, we're going to marry. You better start saying you miss me. Uh-huh. <laughs> Number three, loyalty and commitment. If he's not committed to you, don't do it. Boaz was committed. He was ready to go all the way. Just to marry Ruth. He was ready. Somebody who is committed. And commitment is not only about you. Commitment about passion and vision. Not somebody who has a dream today. Tomorrow you ask him. He wants to be a pastor. Next tomorrow now, he's starting a company. Next tomorrow now, he's thinking of Jaffa. Next tomorrow, he's staying. He's God is saying he should leave to Abuja. You see, no commitment to anything. That kind of person cannot be commitment in religion. Loyalty. Because commitment will be tested. And it must come out shining. Number four, somebody who have leadership. If you can't lead, don't do it. See the way he looks. He looks like a boy. I want to marry him. 
you, your, your father, the father of your children will be boys. So boys should be fathering boys. If you can't trust his decisions, don't marry him. All this one I can't submit is because you don't trust his decisions. Submission is easy when you can trust the person. But when you know that his decisions are always going to put us in trouble, that's why you're saying, I'm warning you, I'm warning you, it's because you don't trust his decisions. Am I speaking to somebody? Bible says, wife, submit yourself unto your own husband and unto the Lord. I've, I've made that example about submission. I'm not sure whether I've said it here. Have I said it in this church? About you and who bad driver taking you. Have you heard me say that in the church? That, that should suffice. If you have not, then go and listen to someone. I don't even know where. Number five, trust and confidence. If you can't trust him, don't date him. His problem is that he likes bonbon. When he see bonbon, he said, just go. Would they remove everybody that has bonbon in life? That one is a dog. He's not a man. Maturity has not come. And you want to marry him? Ah! Be ready to hear news. Ah, baby, I'm sorry. I don't know how it happened. You hear a lot of, I don't know how it happened. Because people will be there. The, the ladies cannot die because of that. This is when somebody says, hey, they are dressing somewhere in our church. They are dressing somewhere in our office. I'm not saying this is not so. But it also shows a mark of maturity. How you dress you. Like, don't wear anything. That's your problem in life. It's your problem. You are never going to address it. You follow what I'm saying. For every one of us are not on the same standard. That's why we say dress well. Because I can also not marry. Any responsible guy will not marry somebody that is supposed to dress everybody. Because what am I then buying? What am I pursuing? Public commodity? Make private things private. That's why they call them. My, my daughters, they teach them in school. Your private part. It means they are private. Go and make. The way they are looking at me, they don't want me to go there. Number six. No, I'm not going there. Leave me alone. Number six, spirituality. Date a spiritual person. Fall in love with a spiritual giant because life is spiritual. Life is spiritual. Dear man, you are not ready. You can't even read a Bible verse. You can't explain a Bible verse. You are looking for a wife. No, no, no. Let's let's say true to ourselves. Some things are not going to work because life will ask you questions. I've seen that rich people cannot give out to children. There are things money cannot buy. Money can't buy you peace. Money can't even buy children. IVFs, I've seen them fail. Everything fail. When the push, you know money can't buy health. What if you fall sick? You don't even have a Bible verse for health in your head. And you are born again for 10 years. Shame on you. I say with all spirituality, shame on you. No. Oh, you know it's John 3, 16. And you say you want to grow. You are not growing, sir. Man of God, you are not growing. Sir, man of God, you are not growing. Bishop, hey, grow, rara. You are not growing. You are not ready. Life is spiritual. All you, all, you, all you know is uh, principles of, 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 of sales, principles of finance, principles of... You see, all those things, after you've tried the principles, they don't work, what will you do? What will you do? Spirituality. But the fruit of the Spirit is love. Gentleness. This anger is my problem. Shut up! Like a baby. Stop giving excuses for nonsense. A girl's uh, backside, front side is my problem. Who, who say every lady should cut up so that you can be seen? Number seven, honest. Some guys can lie for Africa. When they lie, they lie from their hands. The Bible says the devil does not lie. Are you following me? The Bible says the devil is lying. Some people, when they talk to you, when you discover that a guy has lied to you twice, don't give him touch chance. That one when you're running. When you marry a liar, you will soon discover that he has a child somewhere. Be careful. I'm a virgin. I'm a virgin. And you see the way he's doing it on your wedding day. You know that this one is not known for. Liars. That a lot of Christians are just lying. Consuming liars. They are 
lying. And you know the reason they are lying is because you don't want the truth. That's why I started by saying all this makeup. Even your high boy, I don't know what it is. Today it is yellow inside. Today it is clean. Another one you look like a, a like a longo. Every time you just look it differently. I saw a lady at Igbo Airport. She said, I know you. Know, don't you know me? So I said, I know you. I know you. I know you. I, was, I know you. I know you. Why well, didn't know her again? The way she used to look in church was different from the way she was looking now. She said to me, say, yeah, oh, every time you see me, you look like you have, I said, ah, my wife would remove it. It's not week alone. You know, she was on the street, so everything has gone from this. You look very different. How will you wake up in the next morning after your wedding and you can't recognize it? These are real things. What's that your underwear size was 17? What happened? See, mess up everything. Guys, life for you. His dad is a big man, a politician in Abia. He is a liar. But you know, I discovered that some ladies like it. They like it. My husband, my, my, my girlfriend is a, is a businessman. You are a thief. That boy is a young boy. And you are telling me he's a businessman. I, I was sitting with a young lady. So what they say? He's a businessman. He said, ah, you know, some of us are not interested in your wealth. We trace the source. It's the spirit of God inside of us. I said, I said, oh, I said, like, how many cars does he have now? He said, he has a fleet of like seven cars in the showroom. My head has done the mathematics. That's about 20 million. I said, his first car. How did he get? Hey, he has an uncle in the US. What's it better? That's how they lie. That's a, an uncle in the U.S. sent it to him. He now saw this and made 100% profit. If it was like that, you think I'll be a pastor? Shipping and importing. What are you saying? We, we lie to ourselves. Things that are not reasonable. Them judge were going to do a pro business. They told me, I said, you are, lying. you are looking at those people doing estate development. You everybody is reality now in Lagos. I'm a reactor. I'm a reactor. I said, for one night. Money laundry. For one. I said, should people are starting now? Who oh, say is it? Is. They have been there now. See the kind of suit he's wearing. He's not. He's telling you that he's not wearing the 200,000 house suit yet. He's not. He's not. But when they started, they thought it was. I told them, I said, <laughs> these people are not telling you the truth. You, you started business one year. You are signing somebody. Social media, give him 200 million. How much is your profit? I'm doing tech, I'm doing tech only. You are doing tech, you're a liar. That's why many of our guys are useless in tech now. They don't even have a job because they followed. I'm doing tech. They are lying to you. Some of them are pushing money laundry close to politicians. They're just using them to move money. How can you? Your company has never broken through, you have not declared a profit, and your chairman, the guy who owns it. He's using a Prado of 2022. A car of 150 million. He has never made profit. You think it's that way? You see, the things we tell ourselves, that's why we are raising evil thieves in church. Thieves in church. The way we are, we're not saying certain truth. He's not adding up. Magic only. He's a thief. Don't let a thief catch you. He's a thief. That's why young men cannot follow vision again. Girls are saying no to people who have vision. They are following money. They are thieves. I'm telling you, ladies, are the problem. You are following thieves. Thieves. I don't know, sir. How can that can someone? I, I, I bought a Ferragamo. See, an iPhone 14. Give it to me. I will sell it. I assure you. New one that I did. If you give me UK use, I will use it. New one. See how many things we need in the church. You don't for, see, I will not ever apologize. I'll use this by camera. I will not apologize. I'll just use your money to do something else. A girl who does not have a job using an iPhone 14. I say, my, my, my boyfriend, if your boyfriend really likes you, he will buy your iPhone 14. He will set you up in business. It's because he knows that even if he sets you up, you will finish it only. And he will not. You are both six. Professional Yahoo boys. Lying lips are abomination to the Lord. Lying
lying lips, they are abomination to the Lord. Abomination to the Lord. We, know, we are not even interested in diligence, slow building anymore. People don't want to blow. Wonder why you have a generation where your politicians can't even do any good thing for you people. Because it is all of you can only need. You want to vote for somebody, you want money. Everything is about money. Somebody told me, I'm, I'm starting my tech. tech. You're starting tech. You better go and get a job. So that that tech. You cannot continue that way. Oh. Except you have people. Do you know how many developers I have? I know. Who are really, really struggling. Somebody started a tech company. It's paying developer one million. In one year, they will sack all of them. That's what happens. Go and ask in tech. This is information I know I have. They are not telling you publicly. They have sack all of them. Somebody that's not breaking through is paying one million. In task. I should not mention people who have been there in business are paying people 300, 350, and they are able to stay longer because those ones are really doing business. Not Yahoo Yahoo, not laundry. Stop looking for money that's not there. You want to marry somebody who is using holy man. If you want to do that, marry an Igbo man, 48, you can buy you G Wagon. For all this, you want to marry a young boy who is this 31, and you should give you G Wagon. Join US military. What am I saying? Stop looking for thieves. Because even if you look for thieves, you yourself are a thief. You don't like that. You don't know what they use. Forgiveness. Marry a man that forgives. Some men can never forgive. They, and God is showing you now. The last time you offended him, he told you the clothes you wore, what you said, how you said it. And you still want to marry him. That's a sign. Some guys cannot forgive. I'm telling you. I know somebody who is in a marriage now of about two years. The guy keeps telling him what he did, she did when they first met. There's no hope for that kind of marriage. I'm telling you. No, no deliverance can solve it. Because the guy has refused, let's go. Offenses shall come. That's what we said. Don't marry a man who is easily offended. And who reminds you of your fault every now and then. Don't. I wonder who you marry now. Number nine, contentment. Marry someone who is contented. When he has money, he's happy. Have you met people like that? When they don't have money, they're angry. They are, they are sad. They are destroying everything. You say one thing, they say 20 things. Or some of them will just go to depression. Quick depression. And that's what they call it now. How far? I don't, know. I don't even want to talk to anybody. Because there's no money. Ah, lack of maturity. Paul said, I have learned to have base and to have bound. In plenty, I'm fine. You've got to learn how to make your love to remain the same. Number 10. Marry someone who is patient. I've been teaching you this thing. I've been teaching you this. You cannot know it. Those arrogant guys don't deserve God's ladies. Marry someone who is patient. Number 11. Self-control. Marry someone who has self control. Ah! I told my wife one day, I said, That girl is fat. Hmm. Hmm. It's fine. I cannot say she's not fat. It's lying. And the lying lips. This one is fine. That girl is fat. If I left it that way, and I left it that place, again, but you know some guys, girl is fine. They are following. That is separation between a dog and a man. Or you go to just following her. Marry someone who has self So that you will not come and be meeting bishops. You know many, many women now they meet you know, pastors and pastors. Oh, they are not letting me enjoy my family. Oh, that won't be any. It's not the ladies. It is the man. 
Let's say the truth. Somebody marries four wives. It is not the ladies. It's the men. We are the issue. You have no self-control. Everything lies in completion. You know there are some guys who are not married here, but I know the kind of person they will marry. Because they have come to me with three, and every time they are light, and they have body. So I know that that's their weakness. You know? You know? So that is also going to be an area of weakness. Number, even when they marry, except their self-control, when they see their products, they know. What is it? We go around like dogs. The amount of sex going on in Lagos is mad. It's crazy. And every time they say they are the girls, they are the girls. If the whole world is full of guys like me, they will run out of business. You will see them. Some of them will be selling sweets in front of their house. Some of them will be selling biscuits in front of their house. Some of them selling chicken in front of their house. Because there are guys who needed that. It's time we start telling ourselves some social truth. The people who do that, they are not, their, their name is not Mukalai. Their name is not Abdullah, Abdulaziz. They are James, Moses, David, Daniel, Emmanuel. All right. Finally, marry someone who has fidelity. Somebody who keeps his word. Somebody who is faithful. Somebody who is faithful. Not looking for alternative. He's not looking for options. His eyes, his face is set. He's looking for you alone. He's looking at you alone. That's the person you should marry. That's the person you should date. I miss the part. That's how we end. Listen, they are sweet. God's will will not bring you chocolate. I will not bring stars to your face. I will not make you start shining. But when you see me, ah, your cloud will full of silver or butterflies in your belly. Leave all of those ones for M and B, Amazon Prime, Netflix, and all of those. In real world, Guy will not make you feel anything. You will love him, you will like him, but you will not be. You know how they say it in movie that when he's in front of him, his leg, her leg just starts shaking, and then you are looking at each other's eyes like this, and then he's blushing, saliva is almost coming out of the mouth, all of dripping and drooping, and all of those nonsense. That is not a sign that you love someone. Because love is a choice, love is committed. Love. And love is not feeling. Love is feeling you'll be on your seventh marriage by now. Love is not feeling. Love is choice. Love is commitment. Love is loyalty. Love is sacrifice. Love is acceptance. That's what true love is. Sisters, God has this beautiful story of love written for you. I'm not saying set for less. I'm asking you look at men through the eyes of Christ. Don't define your marital sources by how well your wedding day looks or your lifestyle stacks up with other women. Start seeing yourself as who God has called you. Work to become a person and the speck in the eyes of God. And then by doing all of that, you have been positioned for a man. When it comes to that decision, I need a wife. He looks around his circle. Where else will I go and meet? It's not this lady. Why? Because you have been consistent over the years. You have stayed true to your values. You have stayed true to your commitment. And that's the truth. That's what God needs you and I. Don't go out there dress well. Some of you thought that's what I want to do. Play them and kill their head. That one is how to get a man for sex and on the bed. This is how to get a person marriage, which is God's ordained way for us to live our lives. God will help us. God will help you. We are all, I, I don't know, I, I feel like saying this rejoinder. <laughs> I'll be a joinder. Uh, no one is truly perfect. Right? So you might look at what I have listed and say, my God. 
for all of those things I've counted, I've listed, there are some that you should never compromise on. Don't compromise on integrity, on truth. Don't marry a liar. Anybody who still loves money, don't marry them. Because he can use you for money. I hope you know that our generation has become mad. When they say they can use you for money, they really mean it. They really mean it. This generation, they really mean it. Because some people have sworn that this year, they must leave blank Barca to go. They have sworn. They don't do anything. He who believes that money is everything, he will be suspected to do anything for me. Bow down your head, bow down your head. I believe it's been value for yourself. I want you to then start talking to God and start speaking to him. God help me. God help me. You begin to talk to God and say, God help me. Help me to do better. Help me to become better. The focus, the, the, the main thing I say, I said, is so that you can understand that what God has made you for is that you must become what you want to attract. And help are comparable. That's what God has promised all of us. I look like my vision. I'm a man in motion. Things are working for me. Things are falling in line to me. Help me. To go back to my first love. I, be, I am a reader of the word. I study the word. And I, and I do the word. I find principles and I live by them. Lord, everything that I have said that was just mirage. That I have built around my life. Around my lifestyle. That was just mirage. Were lies. I repent of them. And I begin to live by my reality. I begin to live by my truth. I begin to live by my truth. I don't need to convince anybody. I just need to convince God and me. Lord, I live better. I do better. I speak better. I'm more compassionate. I'm more loving. I listen. I listen. I empty myself of pride. I, I, I empty myself. And this, this, is just, this is the end of everything. So this is not just ladies praying. This is all of us just saying, God, we emptied ourselves. We empty ourselves of pride. Make me that virtuous woman. Make me that excellent man. Make me an example. Make me an example. Make me a boss. Make me a Ruth. Make me a boss. A man who is dependable, who is loyal, who is honorable in the community. A man of influence and great wealth. That's how scripture defined him. Lord, help me. Let your glory rest upon me. Teach me, O God. Listen. And one thing you will need is the beauty of the Lord. Finally, as we pray this morning, can you ask that the beauty of the Lord will rest upon you? Can you ask that the beauty of the Lord will rest upon you? Many people are ready for marriage. But what they have lacking is the beauty of the Lord. It's the grace of God. Can you begin to pray, Lord, let your beauty rest upon me. Let your beauty rest upon me. May I not say no to God's will when you send them. When you send them. Some of us, some people have come to us. They are even around us. They are God's will. But you have refused to accept them. Because you are looking for fun. For a funnier guy. For a more fun guy. Lord, help me. Help me to receive your will. Help me to accept your will. We know in part, we prophesy in part. But when God gives us his will, he gives us that which lasts forever. Lord, this is my prayer. Lord, this is my prayer. Thank you, Father. Lord, we exalt you. Thank you, Father. Thank you. Thank you for listening. This has been The Living Word. If you have been blessed by this teaching or for counseling or any other inquiry, kindly send us an email to pfa at the ransomedhouse.com or fisayoadenii at yahoo.com or please call 0912-772-3824. The Ransomed House, empowering people to live for Jesus.